In the past, comets have sometimes gotten a bad rap. A lot of people tend to be superstitious about them, blaming unfortunate events and natural disasters on their presence. However, NASA says there is nothing to fear. As a matter of fact, NASA is quite excited about comets and what they can teach us. Find out about these frozen mysteries next on Real World. Comets are cosmic snowballs made up of frozen gases, rock, and dust. And when they get close enough to the sun, all those ices begin to sublimate or burn off as a dusty gas and can even create a temporary atmosphere around the comet called a coma. Solar winds blow those gases away from the sun, creating those famous comet tails. But what's so interesting about a big chunk of ice and rock hurtling through space? Comets are the leftovers of those icy chunks those icy bits that went into making up the planets. So one of the great reasons to study them is that we would really like to know how much of the various parts of what went into making planets ended up on the Earth, how much ended up on Mars, how much ended up on Venus, and does that help explain why the different planets are so different? Just as no two planets are exactly alike, no two comets are alike either. Comets come in different sizes and are made up of different materials. Although the comet's coma and tail are fascinating to see, scientists determine the size of a comet by measuring the diameter of its nucleus. The diameter is the distance across the sphere right through the middle. Because of solar radiation, comets lose mass as they orbit the sun. This mass loss can tell us a lot about the life of a comet and where it might have come from. Every time a comet comes in near the sun, it's going to lose some mass. So the lifetime of a comet how long it's actually going to survive as an entity in the solar system depends entirely on how much mass it loses every time it comes around the sun. Some comets come in so close to the sun they lose so much mass that they don't even survive the trip around the sun. Whereas others, like uh, the famous Halley's Comet, uh, can survive many, many trips around the sun because they don't lose nearly as much mass. From time to time, a comet is in just the right place in our solar system that humans can look up and see a bright object in the sky. One comet that has NASA looking to the sky is Comet Ison. And this is probably Comet Ison's first trip past the sun. Um, it's, a, it's a young comet. We, we speak of them as, as being young because they've only been past the sun once or maybe a, a couple of times. This is probably Comet Ison's only trip past the sun. It's on what we call a hyperbolic trajectory, which means that after it goes around the sun, we're actually going to lose it from the solar system. It's going to be completely ejected from the solar system, go wandering around through interstellar space. So Comet Ison came from very far out in the, the outer, outermost regions of the solar system. It's come in, this is its 15 seconds of fame, and then it's gonna be gone forever. So uh, it's very interesting to study these objects because we don't get very many opportunities. This comet has spent the last few million years coming to us from the far reaches of the Oort cloud, where it has been in deep freeze for billions of years. But as the comet gets closer to the sun, it will boil and evaporate and lose much of its mass as the material from the beginning of time streams across the solar system. NASA has used several of the tools in its bag to get a better look at the heavenly phenomenon. Spacecraft like Deep Impact, Spitzer, Swift, and even the Hubble Space Telescope have observed comet Ison and have given us some pretty interesting pictures of this unique comet. But that's not all. NASA intends to observe comet Ison with all available tools at their disposal, including SOHO, STEREO, SDO, Chandra Space Telescope, MESSENGER, the International Space Station, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and even the Mars Curiosity Rover. Comet ISON will help scientists gather the most comprehensive package of data ever collected about a single comet. Who knows what we'll learn, but just watching a comet isn't enough for NASA or our international partners in space. The European Space Agency has launched a comet very first. The Rosetta spacecraft will rendezvous with a comet and land robotic instruments on the surface. NASA has several instruments aboard Rosetta, instruments that will help us understand how a comet develops its coma and tails, how a comet's chemicals interact with each other and with the sun, and how the comet was formed in the first place. We have visited comets with little flyby kinds of probes, but this is the first attempt to actually not only go into orbit around the comet nucleus and observe it very closely, but also to land on the surface. And so it's going to provide us really the most in-depth understanding of what comets are made of and, and how they behave and what their dynamics are and how they evolve over time. One of the biggest challenges actually has been the duration of this mission. 
because we're trying to catch up with a comet, it's not just straightforward. You can't just drive to the comet. You've got to sync up your orbit with the comet. So as it's going around the sun, you join up with it smoothly because we don't want to fly past it real fast. We want actually want to go into orbit around it. So we have to smoothly catch up with it. And that's not easy. Comets tend to be going pretty quickly. They're on rather odd orbits compared to things like the Earth. And so Rosetta's trajectory has taken it past the Earth a couple of times. It's taken a, a zing past, a sling past Mars. And we've been using these planetary encounters to sync up the orbit with the comet. So while you're waiting for news about the Comet ISON or that next exciting comet mission, check out Comet Quest, a game created by NASA's Space Place team. Just like the real Rosetta mission, you can hitch a ride on a comet as it journeys towards the sun. And just like NASA, you may have to use a little bit of math to meet the challenge. I'm Diego, and see you next time on Real World. And now for an update about Comet Ison. As NASA determines the final status of Comet Ison, most agree that the comet was destroyed as it rounded the sun, leaving behind only pieces of rubble. But even those dusty fragments have a story to tell. Comet Ison, which began its journey from the Oort cloud some 3 million years ago, made its closest approach to the sun on November 28, 2013. Regardless of its fate, Comet Ison did not disappoint researchers. Observatories around the world and in space gathered the largest set of comet observations of all time, which should provide enough data for professional and amateur astronomers to study for years to come.